all television and radio stations in the United States will now cease their regular programming. The fourth beast of Daniel chapter 7 is strictly supernatural, which is why it is diverse, that is to say different, from all the beasts that were before it, the lion, the bear, and the leopard, and it's made up of Satan and his angels, Daniel's fourth beast, who are cast from heaven unto the earth at the woe of the fifth trumpet. This is when all four beasts of Daniel 7, the lion, the bear, the leopard, and Daniel's fourth beast, which is the supernatural, rise up from the sea, which is symbolic of people's multitudes nations and tongues in a one world political system. They all rise up together at the same time at the woe of the fifth trumpet and this is the exact same global political system written of in Revelation chapter 13 that has seven heads and ten horns and as we know from Revelation 17 the seven heads are seven mountains and the ten horns are ten kings. If you were to drain the ocean from the planet earth what would you see? Seven mountains seven continents meaning this is a one world political system, and seven in biblical numerics is spiritual completeness. The ten kings are part of Daniel's fourth beast, which again is exclusively supernatural. So we're talking about ten fallen angel kings who, as we know from Revelation 17 as well, reign one hour with the beast, the hour of temptation, as it's called in Revelation chapter 3, a five month period. It was seven years, but it's been shortened to five months, as we know from Revelation 9, and that locust army you see written of there are Satan's angels. This political beast will be like unto a leopard, which is symbolic of the Kenites and their four hidden dynasties of education, economics, politics, and religion. The infrastructure of this one world system with the four hidden dynasties having already been established beforehand, but it is only at the woe of the fifth trumpet that the leopard comes into being. Now, the shadow government of the Kenites is the he-goat of Daniel 8, with the horn of the he-goat, in my opinion, opinion being symbolic of the United Nations, which will provide the skeletal structure for the actual one world political system, the real new world order. The he-goat becomes the leopard at the woe of the fifth trumpet. The Christian nations become the lion, and the communistic and Islamic nations become the bear when Daniel's fourth beast, Satan and his angels, are cast from heaven to the earth at the woe of the fifth trumpet. Notice in Daniel 7, the four winds are mentioned there before you see those four beasts rise up up out of the sea. The four winds is always speaking of the hour of temptation, that five month period. Notice Christ said that when he returns, he'll send his angels to gather his elect from the four winds at the end of that hour of temptation. So the four winds always means that five month long hour of temptation. The Christian nations right now are separate. Ephraim, which is the British Commonwealth of Nations, Judah, which is Germany, and Manasseh, which is the United States of America. You can even see the World War is written of in Isaiah chapter 9, Ephraim, Manasseh, Manasseh, Ephraim. Together they will be against Judah. And who did the United States and the British Commonwealth fight in the world wars? Germany, which is Judah. But at the woe of the fifth trumpet, they merged together into the lion of Daniel 7, Ephraim, Manasseh, and Judah, the king of the south of Daniel 11, symbolizing all 12 tribes as well as those grafted in. The Christian nations, Jacob, the bear, headed by Esau, which is Russia of today, whose name was also Edom, which means red, that red nation, as in Red Square Moscow, the headquarters of world communism. And don't let anybody deceive you about that. Look at their Duma. They still have a hammer and sickle on the front of their parliament building, so it's a no-brainer that they're still communistic. They're just crypto-communists now, not openly, but they still are, and are the secret headquarters of world communism, with Red China, who's still very much communistic openly being one of their key allies. So Edom means red, that red nation, and that same confederacy between Edom and the Islamic nations written of in Ezekiel 38, where Russia there is called Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. That word chief is Rosh in the Hebrew, as in Russia, and Meshach and Tubal is pointing toward Moscow and Tobolsk, the two capitals of Russia. That's Esau, who was always cursed to live away from the fat of the land. There you go. Look 
look at Russia, as opposed to Jacob, who was blessed to always have plenty of everything. Look at the United States and the other Christian nations. Again, they're not the bear until the woe of the fifth trumpet, but you can see the alliance between Esau and Ishmael formulating already. Remember that Esau married one of the daughters of Ishmael all the way back in the book of Genesis, so there you have it. So the lion is Jacob and the bear is Esau, headed by the United States and Russia, the two world leaders, the two superpowers as they're known. But as we know from Genesis as well, the twin brothers Jacob and Esau struggled together even in their mother's womb, and God told her, the mother of Jacob and Esau, Rebekah, two nations are in your womb, and the elder shall serve the younger, and so it is. So what we see going on in the world today is the merging of the United States and Russia, setting the stage for the trigger, which is the woe of the fifth trumpet, whenever Satan and his angels are cast from heaven unto the earth, and you can read of that in Revelation chapter 12. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, and that political system rises up out of the sea, which is symbolic of people, and in the middle of that five-month period, Satan appears as the Antichrist, and he rises up out of the earth. Woe unto the earth and to the sea. At the woe of the fifth trumpet, the one world political system emerges, then it's wounded to death, and then Satan appears as the false Christ at the woe of the sixth trumpet, with the true Christ not returning until the woe of the seventh trumpet. So understand the three woe trumpets, and you shouldn't have any problem understanding our Father's word as far as the end is concerned.